So today is 31st of August 2021 and we have finally 12 speed duros, which is very exciting. So obviously I assume you probably watched bike radar, etc. etc. go through you know the main details. So I assume you are aware of it, of what it is and etc. all the rest of it. But I think what I'm gonna add today is my thoughts on what's good, what's bad, and what I think they can improve in the future. So I think well obviously the main thing is that it's 12 speed. So we'll talk about 12 speed first. I think 12 speed is good, but not for two by. I think it's obviously better, like there's no denying it's worse, but I just don't think it's like that much better. Obviously it means you can have an 1132 cassette for instance with less gaps, which I think is good. However, I think it's main, for me at least, the main thing it's really good at is um, for one by. And it's that's the first thing we're gonna talk about. Shimano hasn't gone one by. And this doesn't make sense, because if you look at most races on TT bikes, amateur, not really pros because of sponsorship, Everyone has one by, and when they have an option like Campanuts, he'll run the road to one by. So it seems very odd that Durace, considering it's always based on races, does not have a one by option because they could definitely get one up on SRAM if they had 58, 56, and 62 like one by options. I think that would be really good. Obviously, then they'd have to maybe design the derailleur slightly differently so that it could accommodate, you know, clutch things. But in my opinion, I think that's unnecessary. I run a standard Shimano 105 mech with a one by ring on my TT bike, perfect, no issues at all. So that's the first thing we're gonna talk about is 12 speed. Next, obviously, is um, I guess the cassettes, it's 1134 and they're cross compatible backwards. Now this is really big for two reasons. Now, we're gonna talk about 1134, I think that's really good, people need easier gears, people have big egos and don't have easy enough gears, uh, and it will be good because if you own 1134, it's, it'll be the same spacing as 1132 or 1130, which is for 11 speed, which I think is really good. So. Overall, I think that is mega. The other thing that is mega that I'm gonna to talk to you, well, you're gonna see something that I'm gonna building up in a moment, which is gonna use this, but having a 12 speed cassette that isn't SRAM is massive because what it means is that you can then basically do what you can with 11 speed where you can mix and match. And for instance, you know, some derailers, for instance, a SRAM mountain bike derailleur, that uses a standard 12 speed chain, right? And so now, you could use that on a normal free hub and you wouldn't have to get an XD, you wouldn't have to go in the whole SRAM ecosystem. You could nick some of the things from different people. For instance, you could have a rotor cassette, a rotor chain ring, um, a rotor derailleur, sorry, run that 12 speed, have that with a um, Shimano chain and cassette. And this is the point is that by, um, by Shimano not going with hyperglide, all the rest of it, it means you can then suddenly run 12 speed on a bike and it's not that big much of a change. And I think that's a really, really big thing um, for a lot of people because otherwise it gets really expensive every time you know you need a new bike you know sorry you need a new bike every time if you get a new bike for instance then you turbo train it or oh, it's, it's 12 speed i've got to change the free hub i've got to change the wheels etc it's just a lot of stuff so i think that's really good i'm um, very happy um we're obviously going to talk about rim brakes very happy they still have rim brakes not surprising to be honest because um for instance Ineos still use them however having said that how many bikes can you buy at the moment which have rim brakes? None. I think Giant TCR is literally the only one. Obviously, myself, bought an Elves straight from there, um, straight from Elves itself, and got a huge steel, great bike, and that's rim brake. But unless you go like direct to China, you can't really get a rim brake bike, so I think this will be the last rim brake one. I can't see SRAM bringing out Rival. Um, well, Rival was disc only, but the next two, Force and uh, Red, I, I also don't believe that they'll be uh, rim brake. So this will probably will be the last proper rim brake group set, which is very sad um, and not good in my opinion um, because you know people don't like it. Uh, and then also regarding this is what semi wireless on the on the what's it called disc, uh, which is not too surprising in reality. Um, it's not too surprising basically because if you can get the lever to have less stuff in it, you can have a bigger reservoir, which makes hydraulic disc better. You have this pad spacing a bit further away. Uh, so it's actually really big that they have managed to make it wireless. The shifters look, you know, okay, but we'll get into aesthetics now. So you can see here the shifters I don't think look that good. I think this is like a textured thing. That looks like, that shifter looks literally the same as a rival shifter. Like it doesn't look like a Dura shifter. In my opinion, it looks terrible, um, but that's just me. Uh, then we're going to keep going down. Derailers I don't think are very important in the looks sense for me. Um, they all look about the same, but again, there's too much black, there's not enough polished aluminium, which I think is the coolest thing. And then we're gonna talk about the chain set. And I think everyone who enjoys, well, you know, everyone who is, you know, like, oh, I wanna have a nice looking bike. Everyone knows that Shimano 9000 
is the best crank set ever. It's silver, it just looks classy. Anyone who has one now, you're like, oi, that is good. This one, okay, the Palmy might actually work this time uh, because it, it's symmetric. You can see they've changed it slightly. It's more like an old school Shimano crank set, so it actually be symmetric, so it might work. However, I think it looks really ugly. I don't think it looks that premium, and I just think, uh, I just I don't think it looks that cool. Um, and then, yeah, chains and cassettes. I mean, there's a new cassette as well. Here's the, um, obviously, the important parts of like where your teeth gaps are. So 1128, you almost get a smooth block. Uh, well, you get a straight block to 18, which is pretty, or to 19, sorry, which is pretty large. Um, and then we are, we can go have a look at weights as well. Um, but again, I don't think really they're that important how much things weigh. Um, I mean, obviously I'm quite a weight weenie, but I, I think, you know, you can look at this up in your spare time. The wheels, I mean, I don't know who buys Shimano wheels. They're just not that good. They're quite expensive. And if I were you, I'd buy one from AliExpress uh, for a lot cheaper. That would be my recommendation. Um, I think the interesting thing is the pricing on DI2. Um, it's got even more ridiculous than I think it ever has been in my life to the point of like, I don't think you could possibly run this bike without insurance because if you crashed and wrecked your rear derailleur, that's 700 pounds. Like who has 700 pounds to whack on a derailleur? Like before, okay, like my red derailleur is like 400. I think it's a lot. And I'm like, ah, that's too much. Like crashes, big worry. Don't don't enjoy that at all. But rear derailleur being 700 pounds is just a joke. Like it just is. And then the shifters as well being 600 pounds. I mean, the whole thing's like 4K or something stupid or 3.6. I mean, it's just getting dumb. I don't know who, who to be fair, who buys Duro's? Not many people. Um, again, I just don't understand how a power meter with chainring can cost 1,200 pounds. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, it just can't be that expensive to make that. Like, you're just make, doing stupid amounts of, um, like, it's literally more expensive than SRM, and SRM is gonna be more accurate, so I don't really get it. Chain 60 quid, that's quite annoying. It'll probably be less, because I would probably do one of 12-speed Duro's chain for my upcoming thing, which you probably can guess by now what it's gonna be. Um, and then, yeah, all the rest of it, wheels, I mean, I, I don't think many people are going to buy this, I mean, 1,700 quid for wheels, no one spends 1,700 quid on wheels, do they now, you just go hunt, or limitless stuff is quick or whatever, and then we can look at Ortega as well, I mean, Ortega, to be honest, looks exactly the same, and this is the thing, I think, maybe Shimano is a bit weird, but why would you make your premium one and your non-premium one look so similar that there's just no point getting the premium one, apart from the name? Like literally, it looks so similar. And then if we go on the prices, it's just like so much cheaper. Like the chain ring, well, okay, okay, the chain set's 200 quid less. Um, the chain's 12 pounds less. Derailleur is half. That's, I mean, that's ridiculous. Um, okay, it's for wires, but come on, wireless doesn't have that much. Front derailleur is basically the same. Um, but yeah, like I, I, for me, the convergence of Durace and Otegra, I don't think makes sense for them because if you do that people just won't buy Dura Ace unless you like just care about the name well I think if you actually had the more separate and just had like Dura Ace and 105 I think that you'd be better like push Dura Ace a bit cheaper and then you'd actually have a, a genuine distinction because otherwise at the moment I just don't see the distinction at all but anyway that's my thoughts from these two oh and I had some other things about cross compatibility as well which is the last thing I'm going to talk about today I think SRAM do this really well, where you can just get a mountain bike the radar, whack it on, and I don't know, they, they didn't seem to give any more details with this, but I think it'd be really good if you could put mountain bike derailers and do a bit more mix and matching. Instead of having GRX, which I did, is like the gravel groups, I think that's not the cleverest thing. I think they should just merge it all into one, like SRAM have, with the sort of Explorer gravel stuff. But basically, and I'm not really a SRAM fanboy, I think it's all right. SRAM is more user-friendly, but the, like, uh, execution of the product is worse well I think Shimano the execution of the product is better but I don't think they always understand who's buying their products as well as SRAM do because SRAM is if they make it cool and wireless people like me buy it because I'm an idiot and just like oh it's wireless but anyway I think um yeah so I think Shimano haven't done well by not integrating as well um and I think especially like you know people want one by options people want two by options and I just think having like one thing and i also think it's good that their focus maybe has gone away from road racing because let's be honest who road races no one like literally no one road races no one buys a bike and road races you might think they do but in the grand scheme of things it's really not very much it's a very niche part of the sport and i don't think it's very important to focus on that i think that should just be separate um and i think they should focus on what most people do um and have things more cross compatible and all the rest of it i think it's good but anyway, overall, pretty happy that Shimano have done 12 speed. I'm gonna be able to nick some parts for my 12 speed build coming up, which is gonna be exciting. Probably STT bike. But anyway, uh, 
Anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy. Let me know your, your comments, obviously, below about Shimano. What uh, Durace and Ultegra, will you be getting it? Uh, and the other thing is no mechanical Ultegra is a big, big loss, but people maybe just why, like um, electronic these days. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, anyway, cheers for watching. Uh, let me know your comments, and we will see you in the next one.